Hi everybody, it's KJ from Metro Hobbies and I am here finally with the space, the NASA Discovery Space Shuttle. Um, I have it set up on its stand. It's huge, 55 centimeters, I believe. So this is set number 10283 and it has uh, 2,354 pieces, um, which I got to build all of. I, I'm, I've shown you a little bit of the Hubble telescope. Now I've set up this so you can see that the Hubble telescope actually fits inside the, uh, the launch bay or the, 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 the packet load, the load packet. Um, I'll just take it out so we can have a little bit more look at the space shuttle. So it has a little stand there for it to, to fit on. Um, I can get pop that out for you. That just sits in there into the, the load bay. Something else that I will actually show you um, is that in order for you to be able to place the Hubble telescope in your shuttle, you actually need to remove the solar panels that they've included on the Hubble telescope but they've actually included rolled up versions of it. So it looks like that they're just away just before it's being lo launched. Which I, I kind of really like. It's a nice little touch there. Um, and that would allow you to actually place the Hubble telescope into, let me just get it in the right angle. So that actually allows you to fit it there nicely in the payload dock. Um, and this mechanical arm here sits up. Um, they also have little lights, like little suggestions of lights. So you could see what was going on because obviously that's necessary in space. That's a really, really nice little mechanism. There, there are actually quite a lot of little mechanisms going on here. So I'll try and show you them all. They've got a great stand. Here you have, if I twist here, one of the, uh, the rocket, the rocket launches. Um, I can actually change it as if I was steering. So like for a display piece, which this is, that's kind of a nice little touch that they have going on there. So if I wanted to, to change the direction so I could steer it in for landing, because that's what was so marvelous about the Discovery Shuttle. I think it was 1990 that it came out. Maybe it was earlier than that. So that, um, is that it could actually land. It wasn't launch a rocket into space like we did for the moon and get rid of um, the rocket boosters and then we parachute back in. Here was a usable rocket so you could take it up to the International Space Station, which is why they used it to launch the Hubble telescope, um, among other things. Something else I wanted to show you is that they actually have landing gear. So there's a little little um, back here that pops out. You got the landing gear going on there. Rolls. I like that it's a, a little trigger so that you can nice and tuck it away once it once you've finished. Now, when you're building this, that's important. So you follow the instructions there. That's important which way you actually place them in for them, for them order for them to actually align properly and trigger pro properly. So just pay attention to the way you put the, the Technic pins. Otherwise that won't line up properly and you won't be able to get that nice smooth transition and popping out that landing gear. Now, I it's hard to really say too much about this. Um, they've got a nice little command area. They've got little passenger seats in there. So there's a driving unit. Um, I think I can bring off the top nice and smoothly too. Let's try. There we go. So there's enough room for, so you've got all these little command boards. You've got the little passengers in this. There's enough room for about five astronauts to go up in this shuttle here. That's a seat to give you an idea of just how big this thing um, actually would be in real life. Now, I have had people ask about whether you can adjust the stand because it is huge. It's quite big. So in order for you to actually have this on display, maybe your display case isn't big enough. It is possible. There aren't any real instructions. It is possible to adjust it slightly. I, I did manage to adjust it so it came more of an angle like this, but what does happen is that the back rockets do sort of slightly touch the ground when I do that, but maybe that would be more suited to you. So I'll show you why that's possible just as quickly as I can. So basically the brackets that hold that in place, you can actually move them out. And so you can adjust them up and down. Um, you have to do a little bit more changing than that. You will have to change a little bit of those positions. If you live in Melbourne and you're wanting to know a little bit more about that, I'm happy to give you a demonstration in the CBD store once we're open. That's not a problem. Um, I don't have any instructions for doing it. Somebody may have put out some instructions, but it is possible to adjust that stand so you can adjust the tilt of the shuttle when it's in, when it's in display. So it has its own little plaque. 
which I like. It tells you all the little details. So it's got the wingspan, 58 feet. It's got the launchers. There's 39 of them. Like I said, unlike a rocket, it had multiple launchers. Um, it's so, oh, there we go. I got the dates wrong. It's active from August the 30th, 1984, all the way through to March 9, 2011. Um, and it has had an orbit velocity of 17,500 miles an hour um, and the max altitude is 350. So it has these nice little plaques. There's one for the, the Hubble there. So that was launch. Oh, this is where my dates got wrong. So the launch, April 24th, 1990. Um, the launch mass, well, um, maybe you can read these details for yourself um, to get it into orbit. I will show you, you've probably, if you see my other video, you will see that I've actually had the Hubble telescope on a stand before. But just for argument's sake, I'll just get out the little boom. And I'll demonstrate to you that there's not just a, a stand for your... for your shuttle. There's also a stand for the Hubble telescope. So if you give me just a few moments, I'll set that up and you can see what that looks like. Now I'm going to have this on display in our CBD store so that you can come and admire it. Um, Lego always looks better in person. The box are great, the videos are great. Um, obviously seeing me in comparison to it, you can sort of get an idea of its size, but you're always, whenever you build one of these or whenever you see them in real life, you really do can appreciate the details that, and the engineering. So something that I, I like about Lego is that you're restricted by what pieces you're given. You can't just cut anything. You do have to try and work out how am I going to get that curve? How am I going to get it to look like the real thing? What pieces can I use and in what ways can I use them? So I'm just going to get that nice and set up so you can see you've got a stand for each. At the beginning, we had it ready to launch. The packet has been delivered from the, from the, um, from the pad. Um, and now it's in orbit if you like. And this one is now zooming off um, out of the way. And um, I think that's what you guys need to do. I need to, you need to get your, your rockets on and you need to get the Discovery Shuttle because it was a masterpiece of engineering and it's here ready for a masterpiece of Lego engineering and design to make that come to life and to be so realistic considering the fact that it's made with bricks. Okay, everybody, until next time, if you can imagine it, you can build it.